If you've been watching my videos from the beginning, then I guess you know how to watch videos in correct chronological order. What, you want a medal for it? Hell no. However, if you watched some of my earlier videos, you'll have heard about this beastie before. Let's endure Popeye, released by Piranha in 1986. Popeye is actually a pretty hard game to categorize because it includes elements from a variety of genres. There's a bit of platforming involved, there's a bit of problem solving, using the right keys on the right doors in order to proceed, there's some of that annoying virtual treasure hunt stuff that a lot of recent games seem to thrive on, and there's also a fruit machine. Yeah, your guess is as good as mine with that one. The plot of the game is the same as the plot of the cartoon. Olive oil is a fickle slattern. She has, rather unsurprisingly, decided that Bluto is better than Popeye, so Popeye decides to win her back due to his deep-seated abandonment issues. This time round, Popeye decides not to pummel Bluto into submission, because that would probably make the game fun and enjoyable. Instead, he decides to present Olive Oil with 25 still-beating hearts, because... Well, because he's a video game character. He's got to do something, right? Anyway, it is up to Popeye to explore a variety of weird, wonderful, primary coloured worlds in order to find enough hearts to satiate his love. Oh, hey, speaking of the annoying treasure hunt aspect, this game looks like it's the first installment of the LEGO series of games. See how blocky and yellow everything is? Yeah. Actually, that's due to a limited colour palette offered by the CPC. You see, there's this hardware bug known as an attribute clash, which is where the colours from one sprite bleed into the colours of another. By giving Popeye a big, cartoony sprite and by making him yellow, they stop the attribute clash and, thus, have a game that looks better than it could have done had they been lazy during programming. It was also used in games like Trapdoor and Flunky, which interestingly had the same programming team as Popeye. But enough of this sinful learning, let's talk about video games some more. Specifically, how this game was kinda doomed before it even began. See, the main problem with working with Popeye is the same problem you have when working with Superman. The titular character is invincible. That's their shtick. So you either have to keep the character faithful to their skills and make a lousy game, Superman 64, I'm looking at you now, or completely ignore the character's skills and just make a lousy game anyway. Justice League Task Force, I'm looking at you now. In this game, they were pretty faithful to the source materials. Partially in as much as they made Popeye a complete tool, who'd do anything for his horrible, frigid, unsupportive girlfriend, but mostly because you're invincible, so long as you have a trusty can of Spinacea oleracea by your side. That, that's, um, that's his spinach. Yeah. See, this game doesn't have lives as such, and one hit will kill you. But regardless as to what knocks you down, be it Bluto, Witches, Piranha Fish, Birds or Garland, you'll get right back up again, so long as you're carrying at least one tin of spinach in your inventory. In most games, it's a bit of a drag having to sacrifice an inventory slot for healing items, mentioning no names, like Silent Hill 4 The Room. But Popeye gives you 8 slots to work with, so you don't really feel the pinch of carrying your greens around. And to that end, you can actually carry 2 or 3 around and you'll still be fine. There are other items to put in your inventory, of course. The one you'll be using the most is, surprisingly, not the hearts used to satisfy Olive, but keys. Unmarked, unnamed keys that are designed to unlock the unmarked, unnamed doors. Actually, this is one of the game's major flaws. If you pick up a key, then you've got no idea what door it unlocks, and there's no way to find out aside from running face first into every single door in the game. Still, that's what you get when you play a game programmed by, like, two guys for their own amusement. Another irritating feature of this game, it happens to be running in 3D. Oh, it may look 2D, but I assure you, it's running in 3D. Perhaps I should explain. This game allows Popeye to stand on one of three planes. In front of the scenery, on the same plane as the scenery, and behind the scenery. Working in three dimensions like this is a neat idea, and certainly one I haven't seen replicated in any other 2D platformer. Partially because working in three dimensions like this is a horrible idea because it's a 2D platformer. Is Popeye stood in the foreground or the background? I don't know. And there certainly isn't any way of knowing just from looking at the screen. 
to that end, are you on the same level as Bluto, or is he going to walk right past you? Who knows? I mean, you sure as hell don't. In conclusion, Popeye is... Well, it's not a terrible game. I mean, I've certainly played worse. But at the same time, it's not brilliant. So, with this in mind, I give Popeye a score of two baked bean tins and a piece of string. And I hope that you likes me childish review of Popeye the Sailor Man! <laughs>